So one of the um, one of the things that we frequently like to tell young people, and certainly students here in the business program at Santa Barbara City College, is to pers pursue their passion. And I guess the question I would have to ask you is, how did you know you were passionate about this type of business? Or was your passion surfing and you found something that would work alongside that passion? Uh, the latter. Okay. My passion was surfing and I found a way to support that lifestyle. And, you know, I would say for the first decade, we ran it as a lifestyle business. It literally supported our lifestyles and we'd make money and lose money. And, you know, of course, learning more in the times when we lost money, so. Okay. Did you and Carl early on or at some point along the way write any type of business plan? Uh, no, we, we did, uh, not in the early years. I think later on I got into that, um, especially after we went public and I can get into that. But at first it was really writing cash flow projections and weekly and we would, um, this pre-computers and Excel and everything. So we'd hand write these little things out, weekly revenue coming in, weekly, weekly expenses. And of course, revenue never was quite what the expenses were. So mm -hmm. it kept changing. But so I'm sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, but I do believe the business plans are important. And I think when I first started getting involved with it, when we bought Carl out, um, and then later on in about 85, Mark Thatcher came to us with the Teva Sandal. And we started just really um, growing quite a bit, doubled in sales until 93 we went public at I think we were like 65 going on 85 million or something in that range. And at that time I joined an organization called YPO, uh, Young Presidents Organization, and I'd recommend it to any budding entrepreneur that becomes the head of a company by the time they're 40 or 42 that's a certain size. But it is a, an organization that really pushes ongoing education. Um, for presidents and you have a peer group and everything. But that's where I started learning about S-curves and uh, demographics, strategic plans, and we, you know, defined our values, which then go on to a strategic plan and action plans. And we've always had, I, and I guess I get this from my dad who brought me up, um, I had a weekly chore list. And I get these little silver stars every time I did my chores when I was young. And if I did them all in the week, I get a big gold star at the end of the week. And uh, it's funny because I carried that into the business and uh, all my executives would really laugh about that because I would have little charts and little action items that would you know, lead up and really the action items that completed the uh, strategic plan. Uh, really very interesting. It, it, it seems to me like in many ways you essentially broke all the rules. In other words, most of the advice that we hear today is, oh, you have to write a business plan, you have to do a strategic analysis, you have to establish sales forecasts and pro forma financial documents, but your beginning was different then. Uh, yes, and I, I think you need to do that if you're, you know, going to go to somebody for some VC capital or looking for investors. We kind of did it on a shoestring, and I, I really believe there's no better experience than the school of hard knocks. And I mean, we we would, as a sandal company, we'd make money in the springtime, but in the winter time, we'd lose it all. And uh, we went through a couple of recessions there. Um, I remember one of the toughest things. I ever had to do was lay off our entire office staff, including the guy that I lived with who I'd bought a house with. And uh, that was a very difficult time and it actually took a few years to get out of it. But mm -hmm. you learn a lot through that. Well, I, I, uh, I think that's very powerful advice for young people. One of the things that we, at least for me, speaking for myself, but I think a lot of business faculty try to avoid is suggesting that there's a template, that there's one way in which to approach starting a new business. And I think your example is, is wonderful for these folks to hear because I don't want people to lose either their gut instinct or their street smarts when it comes time to maybe pursue their passion. At some point in time, you have to act. That plan has to be executed. 
So having, knowing that or having said that, did you have any specific long-term goals in 1973 or 1980 or when did you begin to think strategically? Uh, I would say it's around the time we went public in 93 because investors like to hear that. And also when you go out on the road show, you've really got to be succinct with your PowerPoint in order to get across the message. Um, but it, it really, we do have a, a mission. If you go on our website, um, we like to grow niche products into global brands. And uh, that's kind of been a pattern that we had developed over the decades and, and we started to articulate it. Mm -hmm. And now each um, brand has its own business plan, its own mission statement that is a five-year plan reviewed annually with the board of directors and the rest of the executives of the company. And it, you know, it's just evolved into that over the years. Mm -hmm. So when Deckers first started, you indicated to us that you went into business as a partner with Carl, and I guess I would call him one of the key players early on. Yes. Were there other people that became, became key players, and how did those people, are they still around in Deckers, or how did that, those relationships evolve? How did they change? Well, a lot of uh, the early key players were family and friends from college. Uh, our first factory that we set up, um, of, that we built for, for Deckers, the actual rubber sandals, uh, was done by one of my college buddies, or Carl's my college buddies, and then one of his buddies came back and then ran it after he left and went on to law school. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout, I, I think it's having, the key thing in finding people is having the same values. Um, and I keep saying values, and, and it's kind of like, a, to us, honesty was always big, uh, integrity, responsibility, a good work ethic, and um, responsibility, just accountability. That's, you know, you say you're going to do something and you do it. You'd be amazed how many people in the world don't do that. Mm -hmm. And was there a process later on, early on, that you used in the selection process of people? that you were hiring for Deckers? How did you know if those folks shared your same core values? Well, early on it was easy because they're buddies or they were family. So uh, as we, we went on, I mean, that would be the thing. And I, I'll use in point um, Angel Martinez, who has been CEO, and I, I want to say it's either four or five years now, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and in hiring him, and, and basically sitting down with him and it's not just the resume it's really talking to him and you know how he feels about certain situations um, does he have the same family values um, and, and I think that's a key thing because especially as an entrepreneur you you enlist your whole family um, like Rita my wife is was very involved at the time it's hard as an entrepreneur to leave everything in the office and come home. You just don't do that because you're constantly thinking. And so at every holiday um, party we have, the first thing I do is thank the spouses and significant others because they, they play a, a huge role. So it's important that you not only pick the right people to be in business with that have the same shared values, but that their family members uh, share the same values. Mm -hmm. I know you've touched on this, but I, and I, I want to ask it again because I think uh, students need to hear this. I, I frequently tell my students that vision and mission statements are important. And a lot of the literature that's out there today, uh, I even talk to business people that say, oh, mission's mission. They're, they're useless. So my question is, do you, do you agree that these documents are important and what was your vision at the beginning? And has it changed any in the 30 plus years that you were the founder and CEO of Deckers? Well, first off, I do believe they're important. I think early on, we didn't really think about that that much. Um, maybe inside we did. I know that I wanted to stay surfing. I mean, I still, one of my goals to be the first 100 year old surfer. So <laughs> I just got to stay away from pilings. <laughs> but uh, it, um, I do believe that they are important, and, and really what's important